What's up guys, it's F Focus, and today we're going to have a little bit of a different video. Um, so I've been playing Escape from Tarkov quite a bit lately, and as the game really isn't that big, uh, there's going to be more and more people playing, especially since the date that it's going to get released is just getting closer and closer with every day. So I know I'm going to see more and more people picking it up, so I want to get a video out there to help everybody that's kind of new to the game or even if you're not that new you're just struggling with the game because this game is not forgiving at all it's a very challenging game but i mean i guess that's why we all play it right it's rewarding once you finally do complete a raid or kill somebody or anything of the sort when you finally complete something in this game the benefits and just the excitement that you get makes it worthwhile makes those other three times you died and lost your AKSs or AKNs and uh, worth it you know so this is just going to be my top 10 tips uh, in no specific order but my top 10 tips to escape from Tarkov to help you become a better player and uh, hopefully land those raids Alright guys, so to start this list off, I'm going to be talking about looting a person's body. Or just loot in general. There's a, a green military box in between the sandbags and custom right after the gas station. You want to go and loot it. Or there's a dead body near spawn. And it maybe it looks like it has a weapon. You want to go and loot it. Or a backpack or anything. It doesn't matter what piece of gear. It doesn't have to be a weapon. It can be anything. I cannot emphasize enough to not go and loot that body. If... You don't know where the shots came from that killed it, or just don't even know how long it's been there. Someone could be camping the body, or this can also go back on you. If you kill somebody, you just made a gunshot, which means you're going to be attracting attention. And this is especially dangerous if you kill that person and you rush to go look, loot their body. Someone may very well be watching you, and as soon as you stop to loot, it's a free headshot. It doesn't matter if you have helmets or not. If they have some gear to kill you, they're going to kill you when you're looting. They will wait until you stop. So I cannot emphasize this enough. If you kill somebody or see any piece of gear that you want just laying there, wait it out. Play a little bit of the camp game. This is Escape from Tarkov, so camping is okay and it's acceptable. This isn't Call of Duty. So if you see a piece of gear that you want, sit there and wait for a minute and a half to two minutes. And if you don't see any action, don't hear any ruffling, don't see anybody go ahead and loot it it it, it should be safe i'm not going to tell you it's safe because chances are someone may be out camping you but it could be safe and you could be free to go and get that loot and then go back and uh, proceed with the raid hey, rubles are run. tip number two kind of is going to be focusing on some of the lower level players because as you get higher level you can buy better attachments in the shop especially if you level them up so this is going to be kind of focusing on the lower level players who maybe just kill the scav for an AKS or kill the scav for a Keter. Uh, any of the sort, once you get that gun, uh, it's going to be very tempting whenever you're checking close quarters to put that on full auto. Now, if it's inside the dorms on custom or maybe close enough quarters in the factory, it, full auto will probably be better for you. But if you're taking it into woods or anything like that and there's going to be some medium range fights, I strongly suggest you keep it on single shot because especially if talking about the AKS, when it's on full auto, the recoil is insane and the overall accuracy of the gun is dumped. It's, it's really bad and you'll find yourself missing and maybe even getting killed and you don't know why because your gun is pointed right at them. Once you're taking shots in Tarkov, your guy kind of flinches and even though you're going full auto, your gun's kind of tilted up as the recoil is forcing it upward. So the gun barrel isn't actually actually pointed where it looks like your crosshairs are so you're going to be missing a lot more shots and you're going to be a little bit confused so i emphasize when it comes to fully auto weapons since i know they also have a single shot option keep it on single shot for mid to long range fights and uh, just kind of practice that first before you take it into uh, an online raid and try to go full auto all the way uh, without a grip or anything to reduce the recoil and overall accuracy of the weapon Tip number three, always assume there's another enemy player nearby. Now, even though this kind of sounds like it's just an assumption and it's kind of implied that there's going to be another player nearby, a lot of people don't take this into consideration. You see a lot of hatchlings on a factory that just roam around and start looting boxes blindly after the game just started. Now, this is probably just because they want to get some fast gear into their gamma container and just get killed and get out. 
but uh, you see this on Customs and Woods a lot lately too, and uh, people are just kind of roaming around, uh, and maybe killing scavs, and going right up and looting their body. Now that kind of goes on tip one, but at the same time, you want to always assume there's somebody nearby. If you think you heard a noise, stop moving and wait it out. Like I said also, Camping is okay in this game, it's a Tarkov, so it's not like someone's going to hate you just because you're camping. Everybody camps in this game, uh, there's a very few number of people that don't camp, and mainly because they're streaming so they want action. So if you think you hear something, take your gut on it and just kind of stop and lay low for a little bit. Don't rush straight to the combat or don't just roam around like you're by yourself, because 9 times out of 10, even if you don't hear gunshots and you think you're alone, you're not. Tip number four. This one's going to be all about the traders. So if you want an infinite pool of AK-47s or an infinite pool of Saigas or SKSs, you're going to need to level up your traders. Now I know this sounds like uh, the monotony of the game, the grind of the game, and as it kind of is, it also kind of isn't. There's a couple tricks you can do. Obviously you're going to be losing some money on this, but in the price of you leveling up the trader and getting a whole new couple pieces of gear on their inventory that you can buy, it makes it all worth it. Uh, and on all of them, you can buy something for the rubles and you can immediately sell it back to them. Sometimes you'll only get 40% of the rubles back, but a lot of the times if you pick the right weapon or pick the right piece of gear or med supply, you can actually get uh, upwards up to 65% back for that weapon that you just bought and resold to them. So yes, you are losing almost half or half, but like I said, the price that you get for the new level and all the new gear that they bring Nine times out of ten is going to be better, up, other than kind of maybe the first couple levels on some of the traders. They kind of are worthless. But other than that, the last tier levels on every trader, no matter what, is always going to be worth it. And talking about traders, the big thing I cannot stress enough is avoid the fencer at all costs. You cannot level him up. He rips you off on every piece of gear that you sell him. When it comes to knives and stuff like that, if you take off of a player or anything, he can buy those for a little bit of cash, but everything else, avoid him. Don't sell him med supplies. Don't sell him guns, ammo, clips, anything. Avoid it at all costs. If you need to have sell a piece of gear, perfect. But other than that, look at the other traders. If they buy it, sell it to them because that will also increase your total number and it'll help you level up your traders. Tip number five. If you keep getting killed by other players that have better gear than you and you're trying your best to kill them so you can get their good gear, it's going to almost be against your favor every single time. You may have a 10% chance of killing them by a lucky attack on factory, but chances are if it's in customs or woods and they have an assault rifle and you have a hatchet, you're going to die. Now, there may be some exceptions. You are a ninja, an assassin, and you can come up and one-tap them with your hatchet. But, like I said, nine times out of ten, you're probably going to get murdered. And this is all because of this one sentence. Better gear kills better gear. So, if you have better gear, you're going to stand up against somebody with the same amount of better gear. Better. <laughs> So if you have a hatchet, you're going to lose against somebody with better gear. So if you want to take out that person, you want to get their gear, do not be afraid to take out some of your best gear. Don't be afraid to take out that AK-47. Don't get, be afraid to take out anything. I know it sounds scary because this game is so unforgiving, and if you lose it, then you're upset. But if you don't take it out, one, it's just collecting dust in your stash, which is no fun. And two, you're never going to get that better gear. So if you want to kill somebody with the better gear, get that M4, get that AK, get that anything, then bring out your best gear so you can take his best gear. That. Tip number six, maps. Now, if you want to be successful in your raids and you want to get as the maximum number of gear or XP in any possible raid that you can, then you need to know the maps. Now, map awareness and knowledge of the maps are in any video game that you're going to play, but especially in Tarkov, because raids are very important, and the AI in this game are absolutely insane. Uh, from their aim boss to the repositioning to the everything. They, they are going to be an obstacle on top of the other 7 to 10 players that's going to be in that map with you. It's just a, a big clusterfuck is really what it comes down to. So if you want to be more, more successful, pick a path. 
find a path that better suits you. It doesn't have to be a path with the most gear and you don't have to touch every single loot spot in the map. All you need to do is pick a spot that gives you an okay number of gear. Uh, maybe that's just by killing scavs, getting some gear. Because if you want to do EXP runs and get the most number of experience, by far, hands down, the easiest way is go to factory and just slaughter everybody. So if you're not looking for XP and you're looking for weapons, then take one of the other three maps, uh, Customs, Woods, or Shoreline. Find yourself a path and just take it. Follow it. Kill some scavs, get some gear, and sell it. That's all you need to do. That's how you rack in the money. So just pick a set path and, and go with it. If you need to practice this, the best way is to go offline and take your path route and figure out where the AI spawns so you know how to take them out. Tip number seven, slow walk. Now, I've noticed that since I've been playing this game, not very many people actually utilize this key or this feature. It's, it's extremely powerful. With one press of a key, you're at a slow walk stance and you make virtually no noise with the ambient noise going around and other gunfire and everything else that's happening just in the game you will literally almost be impossible to hear so you can sneak up on an unsuspecting foe i know most people don't use it because you walk extremely slow but that's the downside to being a ninja really is essentially what it is if you are going to be virtually impossible to hear they've got to give it some sort of downside or it's going to be a game changer so utilize this key uh, become good at it so you can just decimate other players and I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you guys another feature that a lot of players actually don't know and I come across some new players and I tell them and they go wow well, I never knew that so here's a little tip that you guys can get just a little free one now you can use the scroll wheel to go back and forth to change your player's speed. However, also in Tarkov, it's unlike normal video games, normal first person shooters. Uh, you only have a stand, crouched, and prone position. And in Tarkov, you have multiple. If you hold down C and use your scroll wheel, you will actually change the height of your player from more than just standing, crouched, and prone. Welcome. Yep. Tip number eight can go on every single map out there. Stuff your face. It doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing, how far along you are, it doesn't matter. If you're looting something, whether that be a corpse or some object, and you see a form of liquid like tea or milk or anything, uh, or you see some crackers or anything like that, if you're not going to use them to trade for a certain item and you're just going to leave them there, don't. Pick them up and use them. Always just right click on them and just click use all. Whether you need that energy or you need that water, it doesn't matter. Always just click on them because every time you intake some sort of food or liquid, it levels up your metabolism skill. And yes, it's a skill that can be leveled in the beta. So like I said, even though you don't need it, go ahead and eat it and level the metabolism up. It's a free skill that you can level up, so why not? Tip number nine. Now, this one's a really big one, and it's a useful tool, especially if you're playing with a partner. But uh, there is a key. By default, it's O. If you press O, it'll bring up a time on the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, it's not a regular time. It's a countdown. Because every map has a certain time frame that they can be open. Every uh, game on a certain map, like I said, has only a certain time frame. So... I play customs and factory a lot. Now factory will start out at exactly one hour when it starts to count down. Nobody's going to be in factory for an hour. I, I, I promise you. Nobody will be in factory for an hour. But that is the max time frame. And for customs that I play, it's an hour 30. So whenever you join in an hour 29.59 and you press O to check it, you know that you got an early fresh spawn, which is exactly what you want because the later you join in on a raid, obviously, the longer a person has to rummage through all the loot and get all the goodies. Now, scavs can spawn in on a map that players are on, but it takes them longer. When you join in with a scav and you press O, you'll realize that the raid's been going on for at least 10 to 15 minutes already. So a lot of the players will either be gone or have already looted most of the gear. Alright, tip number 10 is a big one. And like I've said a million times, can't stress it enough. 
You need to tidy up your stash. Don't let it look like shit. I know most of you people out there have your stash and it looks like a big pile of horse shit. You just have things thrown everywhere. Pistol mags here, pistol mags there. You got AK clips here. You got Saga clips here. You got a bunch of fucking random attachments. You got a bunch of fucking random trash like trophies and shit. Get rid of it. Don't keep it. Definitely don't keep it. Don't let it sit there and just take up a bunch of space. Actually organize your stuff. Have a certain spot for... Uh, AVS vests or Blackrock vests have a certain spot for backpacks stack backpacks inside of each other it's fine in your stash it's it's cancer outside in the field especially for someone looting you but it's fine in your stash keep guns in a certain spot tidy them make them real nice and neat don't allow for any spaces in there so you can get the maximum number of slots available I mean it's a Tetris game but at the same time you want to keep it clean I've got loose ammo one way I've got certain clips one way I've got certain guns stacked in a certain way I've got my money up top my keys in the corner my grenades everywhere my stash looks good make yours look good don't let it become a pigsty I mean come on take care of it a clean stash is a happy stash all right, so to avoid the fact that I can't count, we're just going to go ahead and give a bonus tip. Uh, tip number 11, a bonus tip, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't fucking matter. This is a freebie, and you guys are getting it because you guys rock. Now, I again, this one is pretty big. It's annoying. It's really annoying. But there's no way to actually communicate inside Tarkov unless you're playing with somebody else. There's the main way to communicate with like hatchlings and other players inside the game, if you're lucky, is you do uh, your leans. You lean left and right. You press Q and E back and forth. That's the default keys. And you just lean back and forth. And players will lean back and forth too, especially if they have a hatchling and you have a hatchling. They're, that's all. That's all they do. They just lean back and forth to say that they're friends. The second that you turn your back, they're swinging at you. So... There are some trustworthy players in Tarkov. I've met them. And you maybe seen some videos. I'm sure there's videos out there. But 99% of the time, you will find nothing but cancer players. And they will lean back and forth to say they're friendly. And the second that you run away from them and go to loot something, they will stab you in the back of the head. This is a problem. Don't trust them. So what is tip number 11? Bonus tip. The reason I can't count. Blah, blah, blah. Trust, Trust nobody. nobody. You could almost call it all opinionated, but that's my top 10 tips list for Escape from Tarkov. It's a very hard game, and if you're a new player and you don't really understand the concept, it's kind of hard to stay at your seat with it and want to continue playing it. But it is a really fun game once you do get the hang of it. So even though it's hard right now, just pump the grind out, keep your pedal to the floor, it will get easier, and it only gets more fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Probably died. So I'll say it again as if this is like my first time saying it. What the fuck are they doing? I am feeling lonely. In a and it's time to end the ride. They need to slowly. Over those can lift me up this time. You were the only